Hi there, my name is Matt Heimlich for Quixel, and welcome to this introductory primer on establishing a workflow between Blender and the new Quixel Suite 2.0. In this first part, I'll be showing and explaining how to set up a model you've created in Blender for proper export. This also includes assigning materials and baking out the maps you'll need to get the most out of the Quixel texturing experience. As you can see, I have my character separated into several different objects within Blender to maximize UV space and each of these objects has one or more simple diffuse materials assigned to it to delineate where I'd like different textures to go during the texturing process. In the case that you have an object that needs multiple materials applied to it, you simply select the object, go into edit mode, select the faces to which you'd like to apply the material, select the material itself, and hit the assign button. In order for this information to be useful for Quixel, we have to bake this color information to a series of ID maps. To do this, we simply go to the render panel, go to the bake panel, and then under Bake Mode, we select Textures. Now we have to assign image data blocks to the different parts of our mesh. To do this, go to the UV Image Editor, clear out any existing images, then click New, and you'll be able to enter the new width and height of your desired map. I'm also going to turn off Alpha, because we don't need any Alpha information for our ID map. Click OK. And now we have a blank map ready for baking. Now you can go ahead and add a name to your texture as well. Now we need to link this image to our mesh data block. To do this, go into edit mode, select all your vertices, and then in the UV image editor in the drop down, simply find the map you just created and select it. Now we can jump back into object mode. Back in the bake panel we have a couple of options. We want to make sure that the clear checkbox is checked when we're working with ID maps. Below that, we have an option for margin. This will control how far beyond the bounds of the UV islands the color will be baked. I leave this at the maximum value of 64. The baker is smart enough to know not to let areas overlap when it's baking. Once you have your options where you like them, you simply hit the bake button and wait for your map to bake. Once your map is done baking, you'll be able to see the result in the UV image editor. Now, with the cursor over at the UV image editor, we'll hit the F3 key, which will bring up the Save Texture dialog. Everything is already set up the way I want it, so we'll just go ahead and hit Save as Image. This baking process will need to be repeated for all of the objects which you want to export to Quixel. It's entirely possible to do this all manually using the baker built into Blender, but I highly recommend checking out the Bake Tool add-on available on the Blender Market. The add-on allows you to set up several different baking jobs that will run in sequence, rather than forcing you to sit around and set up each job as it's completed manually. You can set up several passes per job, and each pass can have its own separate image size. Here, we set up two passes, one for basic colors and one for ambient occlusion. There's also an area where we can set different paths for each job output. After we have all of our options set as we'd like, it's as simple as hitting the giant bake button. So I'm going to go ahead and let everything bake out and we will pick back up as soon as the process is completed. Now that the map baking process is completed, we're going to take a look at setting up the objects for export. Select all the objects that you'd like to export, then simply go to File, Export, OBJ. We give our export an appropriate name. We also want to make sure selection only is enabled. Below that, we can optionally apply any modifiers that we have on our objects. We want to include edges. We want to make sure we're writing our normals and our UVs, but we don't need to write materials, so we can uncheck that box. We also want to make sure that we're triangulating our faces. We want to change the default value of export as OBJ objects to export as OBJ groups. This will allow us to have all of our separate objects in Blender exported as a single OBJ that shows up as separate groups in Quixel. The last thing we want to change is keep a vertex order. Now just click export OBJ and as soon as the export process is done, we're ready to jump into Quixel. When you start Quixel Suite, Photoshop will start automatically and you'll be given the main menu bar with the Endo, Dedo, Grayed Out Mega Scans, and 3Do buttons. We won't be looking at Endo today. Instead, we'll be looking at the new Dedo and 3Do. Clicking the Dedo button will bring up the Dedo main menu. First thing we want to do is import our mesh. As soon as the mesh imports, you'll see that we have all of our groups that we exported from Blender. At this point, it's time to load in our textures that we baked. I 
As you can see, I didn't name my ID maps correctly, so they won't be able to autoload. I'll have to go in and load those manually. If you'd like them to be found automatically, Quixel's pretty good at finding your textures if you have logical identifiers appended to the end of the file name, like underscore ID, underscore AO, underscore N, etc. We also want to click this checkbox to make sure that our curvature is being baked within 3D. We have a couple of objects that we have pre-prepared maps for, so we're going to be going in and setting those up manually. The first one is the butterfly wings, for which we have an emissive map. We also have a normal map, so we'll go ahead and load that up as well. The other object we have a map for is the eyes, so we'll go ahead and go to pre-baked albedo and grab the eyes texture. As you can see, for each group, you have the option to set the size of your image maps manually. If you leave this to auto, it will use the size of the images you imported, and if you didn't import any images, it will default to 4K. We'll now speed everything up while we get everything set up for all of our other object groups. Alright, we've got all of our necessary maps loaded, so now we're going to take a look at export targets. At the time of this recording, there isn't a dedicated Cycles export target, but there should be one by the time this releases. For the time being, I'm just going to use the Arnold settings, which are very close to Cycles, the only difference being that you need to square your roughness values. All that's left is to set our export folder. Once that's done, we just click Create. The creation process will run 3do, which will run through all of our object groups, baking out curvature, world space normals, and position maps for all of our objects. In the next part of this tutorial, we'll pick up inside a Quixel and show off some of the exciting new texturing features within 3do and ddo 2.0. Thanks for watching.